everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Larimer. Uh, I am the editor-in-chief of Poets and Writers. Uh, is everybody enjoying Poets and Writers Live so far? All right. Good. OK, so I'm really excited about the next portion of our program. It's called the Perfect Pitch Panel. Uh, I'm a writer myself, and I've worked in publishing for about 20 years. So uh, I know uh, the amount of time that writers spend thinking about how to approach publishing professionals. Uh, how much time is spent thinking about how we might get an editor or an agent interested in our work. Uh, much of the coverage in Poets and Writers magazine is designed to give some insight into how publishing works, how agents and editors think, <laughs> and how successful writers meet them and work together to create something special. Uh, in the new issue of the magazine, which you all have, the one with Judy Bloom on the cover, the lovely Judy Bloom, uh, uh, Renee Zuckerbrot, who was here with us today, uh, shared the aha moment she experienced while reading a successful query letter uh, by a writer who is now one of her clients. Uh, well, we thought we'd do a version of the aha moment here uh, this morning. Uh, so what we did is we asked those of you who had purchased a ticket uh, by the end of last month uh, to submit a query letter that we might consider discussing. Uh, we, we heard from a good number of you, and I shared uh, those with the panelists. We chose three of them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to call those people up one by one, and they are going to read their query letter for our panelists. Uh, and, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what they did, did really well in the letter, uh, perhaps what they could have done a little differently. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about how writers can best present themselves uh, and their work on the page and in person. So it is time to call up our first contestant. <laughs> so uh, before you begin, Jessica, so uh, you are a poet. Yes, I right? am. Right? OK. So you did not write a letter to an agent. No, although uh, you know, I, I'm willing to accept a bidding war. Um, but <laughs> right. no, I, uh, because of course, typically agents won't right. represent poets. So I wrote a query letter about um, trying to interest a publisher in my manuscript. Okay, and who did you write it to? <laughs> I wrote it to Copper Canyon Press. I okay. decided to just go ahead and aim for you know a, a dream press. Okay. Um, well, um, it just so happens uh, that we have someone from Copper Canyon Press joining us. Um, uh, Michael Wiegers. Michael Wiegers, the executive editor of Copper Canyon. Are you there? That yes. Hello. Oh my. He's here. Okay. <laughs> He is uh, joining us via Skype. Jessica did not know this. Uh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm thought cool. it would be a surprise. It's great. It's great. Cool. No uh, pressure. <laughs> um, <laughs> dear Mr. Weigers, I'm writing today to introduce my book of poems, Banished, in hopes that you'll consider it for publication at Copper Canyon Press. Banished explores the movement of a woman who is exiled from her town because locals find her hateful and angry. In the next town, she meets the same fate, after which she wanders in furious solitude. The narrative elements of this come from a Tibetan parable about the danger and poison of anger. My poems, however, adopt the moments of rage and alienation the woman experiences without seeking the resolution of enlightenment. In other words, the book drinks angry poison and rejects the antidote. Effect become causes and anger remains. Poems in the volume move between the perspective of the banished woman and the point of view of the small town locals who drive her away. Banished is my second collection of poems. In December 2015, ELJ Publications will release my first book, How to Break My Neck. Additionally, I'm the author of two chapbooks, Knocked Around and The Division of Standards. Uh, my work has appeared in numerous literary journals as well. I'm happy to provide a complete publication record should that prove useful to you. I received my undergraduate degree in Spanish and English from Kalamazoo College and my PhD from the University of Iowa. I am a professor of English at Harper College, a two-year community college outside of Chicago. As with the publications mentioned above, I would be delighted to supply additional information or details. To give you a sense of my poetic style and voice, I've attached five poems from Banished. Thank you for your time and consideration, truly. Sincerely, Jessica L. Walsh. Very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Michael, do you have some thoughts for, for Jessica? I always have uh, recommendations. I'm an editor. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's maybe um, too much. There, there's maybe too much um, information, but not enough poetic obsession um, in the letter. 
And um, so I almost want the, the woman who you're describing to have a name, and maybe she doesn't in the poem. I, not, not seeing the poems in front of me, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know that. But I want to get to, um, to not only who this person is, but um, a, a little more of why personally you are obsessed with this character. Mm -hmm. When you get to, in other words, the book drinks angry poison and rejects antidote, I think that's a, that's a great line. After that, I'm not certain that no, you need to tell me much more. Okay. Um, okay. You're, you're telling me too much. Okay. And, and, and I will, you know, but, but I do want to know a little more about um, who this woman is and then mm -hmm. um, why, why you chose this subject. Um, personalize it at that point. So yeah. I, I like to think that, that you know, the, the business that we're all in, um, you as a writer, me as a, as a professional reader, as an editor, it, it begins and ends in, in solitude, in isolation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and while, yes, I, I can't remember uh, which of my colleagues said, you know, this is, you know, kind of a business relationship, it's also very much a, a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I want, I want to know something more about you beyond okay. your credentials, which you then go on to give me. And I think you give me your credentials too much, okay. but you don't give okay. me your, your personality enough. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, the, the, the paragraph about your credentials, I'd cut that way back. Okay. You know, okay. Just, just you know, tell me you've, you've got you know, a book, a couple of chap books, give me their names. I can, if, if, I'm, if I have the time and I'm interested, I'll look them up. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, and, and if you, if it's not, you know, like six pages long, um, give me, you know, give me a sample of where you've been published. And okay. that can be, that can, that doesn't need to be in your query letter. That can just be attached, um, with the poems. Okay. Um, so, um, let's see the, the other thing, uh, in general, I'd say that, um, you know, your, your undergraduate degrees and what have you are probably not necessary, except I encourage people to do their homework on, um, the, the people to whom they're sending their work. Mm -hmm. And, um, in your case, I would normally say that, um, I don't need to know about Kalamazoo college, except in my case, I also went to Kalamazoo college. <laughs> So, so you've caught my attention. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, but, but in general, I don't, I don't know. You know, just give me your, your, um, your terminal degree. And I, I guess finally, I would say, um, rather than, than um, saying to me to give you a sense of my poetic style and voice, um, I'm attaching um, mm -hmm. my material. I, I would go ahead and tell me what you think your poetic style and voice is. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's something that we ask of each and every one of our poets, um, particularly after they've been, they've been uh, published. And I, I think uh, Roger mm -hmm. Reeves may be there with you guys um, today. Uh, you could ask him. We, we ask all, all of our poets to describe their work themselves because you are the primary advocate for your work. And okay. so um, being able to get it, down to you know, to you know how uh, this this is an opportunity to bridge that that divide of um, you know of of isolation of working in isolation, and and say um, here's my work, and this is how it fits with what you do as mm -hmm. a publisher. Um, I I was I'm wondering the the um, the reason behind the topic was that with my first manuscript that an editor had said to me. Your poems are very good, but they're very gendered and very angry. And so that was the rejection. And that, that sparked the, I had read this, this folk tale and, and it sparked kind of the project. Um, but I was concerned that if I explained that, that it sounded like a grievance against editors. And certainly I don't want to approach an editor with a grievance against an editor and be like, this editor said blah, you know. Mm -hmm. Although that was, and so when you mentioned about the origin story of the, the the topic I would would it be something that could be mentioned without alienating editors or seeming I actually think there's a lot of female anger and rage at the moment I don't mean you know homicidal mm -hmm. but so when I read this I was like I actually was really drawn to it not because I'm angry or homicidal but I thought it was actually <laughs> I'm neither um, really well done and um, you know if this were let's say a description of a short story collection. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would be very interested. Um, my question really has to do with the bottom, with, mm -hmm. with the closing graph. I would actually want to know where will the poems or the stories from this collection, I'm trying to make it a little more general for the people in the audience, mm -hmm. have been published. Okay. Um, is the complexion, is the, I'm sorry, collection complete? So mm -hmm. you've written maybe, have you written nine stories and six have been published, or mm -hmm. you've written six stories and you plan on writing four more? Mm -hmm. That's what um, I would ask for the closing paragraph. And um, Michael is right. There's sort of too much information um, about like your undergraduate degree. Yeah. And, and the only other thing I would add for agents, less so for uh, Copper Canyon, is, you know, are you approaching me because you're you think I'm an angry woman, or are you approaching me for, you know, um, because you like my list? Um, so that would be for if you were to write to an agent, okay. or any of you, agents. And I would say Michael had suggested um, having a, a separate page of um, where your poems have been published mm -hmm. before. And um, I checked out your website, and your bio was really impressive, and I saw that you've been nominated for some poetry awards, mm -hmm. and you did uh, blogging for Tupelo Press and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think that's really helpful. Okay. And I would include that maybe at the top of your of your list of where your your poems have been published because it shows that you know you're not just doing this as a you know as a little hobby that you're really seriously invested in this and you've okay. you know you've been paid attention to so far. Um, I'd also I mentioned this for the other authors. I'd like to know what you're doing in the. Um, you know, on a local level, regional level, um, you know, in the in the poetry scene, perhaps. And then it might be good to, it sounds like these are narrative poems, and it might be good to kind of maybe use some examples. Is it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the style of Philip Levine, or, you know, are you addressing social issues like Claudia Rankin is, mm -hmm. or any of that kind of stuff, I think, okay. could be helpful as well. Okay. And, um, very briefly, the last paragraph, just so you can hear it, I'll read it again for you. It's very long, so brace yourself. Thank you for your time and consideration, comma, truly. Um, I know that sounds really stupid, but that truly, um, <laughs> well, I'm about to say it sounds really stupid, but that truly to me makes the whole letter lovely. There's something about the voice there that comes out like she really means that, and I was mm -hmm. touched. So I know that sounds dopey to think about like the voice, but everything is voice. And if you can make it seem real and heartfelt, we pay attention, if, if it's you know coherent and readable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is all the time we have. I want to thank uh, Jessica, uh, thank Joe, you. and John, and our panelists.